You know, it's such beautiful shit. I mean, hello YouTube. What's your butt here? And we are back in Amnesia. The Dark Descent. Um, yeah. And, uh, I don't know what we're doing. Because, to be honest, it's been quite a while, hasn't it? Um, reason for that. Uh, there's been electricians in my house. And they have been completely redoing the wiring. So, yeah. That, that was a thing. Um, oh. Well, hello. What's that? Hello. Oh, thank God, there it is. I guess it is a good place to hide it then. I can't believe I just found that. Um, wow, what is this? Ah, that's the key. Okay. Yoink. <clears throat> oh, wanton destruction is always the right answer. Anyway, yeah, electricians. One of the electricians, actually, commissioned me to do an art project based on something that I did before. It's um, it's a sculpture based off of the work of Isaac Salazar, I believe his name is. Uh, there's a link to a picture of it on my DeviantArt in the description, or I will put that in there, <laughs> maybe. Um, it's a bit rough around the edges, but it, it was it's right. I mean, it's pretty. I'm doing more in the future, and he's commissioned me to do another one, which is really weird. I'm not I'm not an arty person. Being commissioned to do something arty is weird. It's crazy, you know? And uh and I <laughs> I've been trying to avoid it. I guess uh, I guess I can't really shun around it. I've watched The Human Centipede 2. Uh ooh. Ooh, oh. Ooh. Oop. Oh, that was disgusting. Anyway, <laughs> watched it. I guess I guess I should review it. Um, first off, uh, sorry for any bad language. If it will either be in disgust or quoting the film, <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a bit of a foul mouth film at times. You know, you know how it is. Oh, I mean, could you expect any less? Let's be honest. Um, yeah, film as a whole. I'd say it's much better than the first one. It was much better done. The casting, for the most part, was pretty good. There were a bit shaky moments, and some of the scenes were a bit crap and funny when they were trying to be creepy. That could just be me. Um, okay. it, the film starts off with this, this really fat, chubby potato of a man in a security office watching the ending of The Human Centipede 1. Uh, yeah. That, that's that's basically the whole story. <laughs> this guy, this uh, mentally handicapped guy, is obsessed with the human centipede. He has a little log book where he chronicles tons of stuff to do with it. Like all the actors and actresses, it, which are called actors now, and stuff like that. And he, uh, he fawns over this one actress who was the middle of the human centipede one and who was, like, the star and stuff. We, they have a nice scene later on. It was, it was quite nice, actually. I enjoyed that scene. But, yeah, uh, he's falling over it, and a bunch of people arguing outside of a car. He goes up, shoots them both in the leg, and hits them over the head with a crowbar before putting them in his van. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it then cuts between a bunch of scenes. Oh, God. Oh, no, wait. I have these. Um... It then cuts between a bunch of scenes of him stealing other people, like kidnapping them and stuff, shoving them in a um, in a warehouse, and uh, stuff goes. Oh wait, no, I have that. Come on, no, put it in. Try and put it in. There we go. Wait, what was that noise? What was that noise? Um. Ooh. Uh, note there are only two spare rods left in the storage for the elevator machinery. Make sure to only discard the ones which are badly damaged and keep in others in the inner study rooms to, uh, in case all three would crack again. Okay, again. That's not a good sign. Fifth of Jonathan? July, okay. 1839. Today I went to the university looking for answers. I was able to sneak into Herbert's office and pick up an address book along with some relevant textbooks. Professor Taylor at the Faculty of History was very helpful, and I managed to approach the subject of the orbs. The most interesting aspect was the prevalent trace they had left in our culture. The mythic orbs may, in fact, have inspired the Globus Cruciger, which so many royal regalia holds to this day. In ancient times, the orbs were held by priests as a symbol of the sun and its power. 
As I was leaving, I overheard a disturbing conversation. Sir William Smith, the geologist, was killed last night. Less than a fortnight had passed since I'd asked for his expertise. I know it's silly, but I can't help feeling responsible somehow. You're a murderer, Jonathan. But sir, I didn't... You're a murderer. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, next scene in the center feed, uh, it goes to a flashbacky, dreamy type thing of the handicapped guy uh, being sexually abused. You don't see it, it's just like in the dark by his father, who's going... Uh, and the, there's a baby crying, and his father is just going in a really weird voice. Oh, yes! Keep on crying, you're only making daddy's willy harder. Well, okay, that was that was pretty creepy, to be honest. But it, the voice, I can't help but giggle at the voice a bit, because it was so stupid. But yeah, that was that was terrible. Then they have a scene with his mum, and they're eating dinner, and... July, 18, 18, oh, okay. I've read every book I can find on the subject. While rich in legend and hearsay, my knowledge is lack for the insight I crave. I've sent letters to many in Herbert's address book and received answers of varying importance. Today, I got one which differed greatly from the others. From a baron in Prussia. He said nothing about the quaint stories of priests in underground temples. He didn't even mention them. He simply wrote, I know. I can protect you. Come to Brennenburg Castle. Signed, Alexander. What am I to make of this? Protect me from what? Is someone after me? I looked up Brennenburg and traced it to the Prussian woods near the Baltic Sea. While being the least informative letter I've received, it causes me greatest distress and interest. As I write, my thoughts are drawn to my nightmares in which a most disturbing sound calls to me. A sound defying description. A voice from the void. The last few weeks have been awful, with so many sleepless nights dreading a repeat of those horrid dreams. Tomorrow, I shall visit my physician, Dr. Tate, in hope that he can provide me with sedatives to help me sleep. Huh. Is Prussia actually still a country? I'm not sure, but I, I think... I think I heard that it got disbanded or something, or it merged with somewhere else, and it's just not a country anymore. Oh, hello. Oh, it needs more work. Okay. What's this? Oh, I need cogs. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, the mother and the the, uh, the the main character, the, the bug-eyed potato man, uh, uh, just sitting, eating dinner. And she's really angry at him because she, and I quote, she loved her, his, she loved his father, but it's his fault that, uh, that they had to take him away to prison. Right, obviously hinting that, uh, he, that, you know, he was taken to prison because of the whole sexual abuse of a baby thing. Also, how the hell can you sexually abuse a baby? I mean, the, I'm not, I don't want to get into massive details, but the father was talking about his, uh, Willie getting harder. And, I mean, wouldn't that kill the baby? I just, uh, no, yeah. Let's not get into details in it or anything, but just just thinking. Yeah. And, uh, um, cog? No, um, cog. No, I've put that in there. Right, okay, walking away. Um, I lost my train of thought. Right, oh yeah, and the, uh, the mother, the old woman, uh, bangs on the ceiling with a uh, with a broom. Really stereotypical. This film is full of stereotypes, which there's probably some hidden meaning in that, but I'm not analysing this critically, just as a film, so I'm not going to look for meaning or symbolism. But uh, yeah, and then this really angry dude, really heavily tattooed, comes in, comes down, and starts beating the crap out of the, uh, out of the main guy. Not sure why. He just sort of lays there and takes it, you know, as a potato would, you know. Uh, I should also note that he never talks throughout the whole film, the most he does is laugh. So, that's something. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, cool. Two cogs. And then it's a scene of him peeing up blood into the toilet, which is lovely. Always, it always needed in a film. Makes that, swap. that's what I love in a film. That, that's why I enjoy The Lion King. All of the blood pissing in The Lion King, that's what made me love it. 
Oh god. Don't try and look for the blood pissing in the Lion King. It's not there. I <laughs> God. I'm not I'm not trying to disappoint you. Uh, anyway. Uh then uh what what's the next bit? What's the next main bit, I suppose? Um I guess the next main bit is him watching the human centipede in his like security booth again. But this time he's he's jerking off to the pooping scene where the German guy is going, Feed her, feed her you know? And he's just he's got on sandpaper and he's feel like he felt up the sandpaper right and stuff. And he's just gone like, Yeah, that, that's rough, that's so he started he started masturbating with it. Like, yeah. Which links to an earlier part of the film which I completely forgot to talk about. Uh, where the where a doctor comes in to give him some Ventolin, which is for asthmatics, if you didn't know. And the doctor's saying that, um, you know, he, this this is a really stereotypical doctor as well. He's got a big bushy Freudian beard, and he's all ugh. The Freudian part will come into a bit more later, but yeah, he's all doctory and everything. And he starts feeling up the kid's leg while he's talking to the mother. He just starts feeling his, the fat guy's leg up. Like, yeah. You know, some sexually abused children end up, then he leans in and says more quietly, mutilating their sexual organs. Then he sits back and sort of squeezes his leg one more time, and then leaves. <laughs> okay. But yeah, and then uh, back to the masturbating scene. He He's just jerking off with some sandpaper. And this scene amazed me for two reasons, really. One... The faces he was pulling, because there was some special faces. He was doing like um, O faces and rolling his eyes back and just going, oh god, oh, 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 oh. as a fat people, fat, fat person, really out of breath would, you know. I mean, this is strenuous effort, which leads me on to my second point of amazement. This is the this is the kind of guy who you wouldn't expect to be able to even touch his penis, you know, because the belly is it's like it's a big boulder in the way. I don't think he's seen his penis ever just just ever let alone touched it and uh, you know that raised the point of uh, of wonder I suppose what does it need I don't even know um oh I should also say if you if you I mean I'm not like dissing fat people here I'm dissing fat fat person you know this guy was th this guy specifically because he's a murderer and incredibly weird okay no, I'm not just making a social commentary, don't worry. Uh, back to it. Uh, a couple of drunk girls come in, see him doing the, the nasty. Uh, and he takes them as well, you know. But it's not shown, obviously. Um, yeah. He also takes a pregnant woman and a guy but who have a child with them. And he, he they're driving out of the car park where he securities, <laughs> he monitors. And he just shoots through their window. Yeah, he has a gun. I should know. Don't know how. I don't think security guards have them. <laughs> I may be wrong. But yeah, he has a gun. Shoots uh, shoots the driver and the passenger in the shoulders. And uh, he picks up the baby, who's crying at this point. He's he's just a child. He's like two years old, maybe. And he's just sort of going, Oh, giggle, giggle, giggle. Oh, giggle, 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 giggle. Child's having none of it. He's just crying his eyes out. So he puts the kid back in the car, all, uh, all angry-like, and then just leaves. Takes the two people back to his hideout. And then he starts cutting off everyone's clothing. So now there's a bunch of, like, 20 people, all naked, just laying on a warehouse floor, right? And it's, it's awkward at that point. And one of them realises what's going on because he hears a phone call, a message on the fat guy's phone about uh, from an agent of that, an actor who played in the original Human Centipede, who the, uh, who the main guy idolises and wants in his centipede, you know? So yeah, he's arranged a meeting with her, and yeah, he's, he's basically going to kidnap her, long story short. Spoilers! Um, but yeah, that's a thing that happens. Uh, what's the next main thing? Alright, next, the next kidnapping, the final one that I really want to talk about, hmm. is where he kidnap, where he kills the, site, the doctor guy. Basically, uh, he sees on his monitor a, 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 like, sex going on in a van. Just, just, just happening, you know how it is. Just, just randomly playing with these levers. Um, don't know if there's meant to be a code or something, I should really look. 
Yeah. Anyway, yeah, he goes to see the, the whole thing, and it turns out it is a like a, a really like streety person. You know, like Del like Del Boy. He's in a van, uh, and he's just uh, it, it doesn't show explicit scenes of sex, but it, it hints at it. And uh, there's this, this Del Boy guy is sniffing his fingers, and he's just like, "Tell you what, love, your pussy smells fucking brilliant." You know that was that, what the hell? Who says that ever? Do, no, no. I mean, no, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. Obviously, again, language warning, right? And uh, he's he's just chilling around, smelling his fingers and stuff. Then he starts talking to the doctor in the back, who's getting a blowjob from the same prostitute, and he's just going, "Oh, you're excellent." For some reason, he's now like <laughs> northern or Welsh or something. Don't don't worry about accents. It's going, oh, you're excellent. And then the front guy's going, oh, yeah, yeah, she's pretty good, isn't she, isn't she, mate? Yeah. And then the doctor goes, well, you know, I'd rather be fucking that retard boy instead. July 1839. Thank you. This escaped me. They're all dead. Limbs scattered, heads split down the middle, their skin flayed as if boiled. I feel like I'm falling into myself. What's happening? Sir William Smith? Professor Taylor, now Dr. Tate. Is it following me? How can it not be? It's the damn thing I brought from Africa. Something is after me. I have no choice but to trust the Baron. He better know what he claims. If he is wrong, I suspect he'll regret it as well. Dun dun dun. That's pretty cool, actually. That's a very interesting story. Huh. I don't know what to do with these levers, but uh, yeah. So yeah, Ger the German guy then asks how much to fuck her in the ass, and she get and then she lifts her head from his crotch and just goes, "For you, love, fifty. And obviously, then the uh, the bug-eyed main guy comes in, kills the doctor, kills well, kills them both, I think. Yeah. Uh, now let's skip forward a bit to the uh, actually one more scene. There's one scene where his mother, who hates him, is coming in, just stabbing at his bed, his bed sheets with a knife, and then he he it's in the dark, so we don't know what's going on. He's just stabbing at the bed, and then the lights come on, and he's just standing there, going just just like looking at her, like, yeah, what? No fucks were given that day, I tell you. And he just walks in, then lays in the bed that she's just been stabbing repeatedly, like, <laughs> wow, wow, that that takes some guts. Uh, she then pulls out. Um, she then pulls out her like his book on the human centipede and starts ripping it up. He starts crying. Uh, what follows her into the other room and beats her head in with a crowbar. Now, what I don't get with this bit is he is hitting her ridiculously lightly. Honestly, it looks like he's just sort of like tapping her on the skull, but her head is just caving in and exploding and stuff. He then props her onto a chair. Uh, knocks on the ceiling again to make the um, make the big angry guy come in, and then he kills. He shoots the angry guy and takes him. Uh, skip forward to the actual centipede scene because that's all you want to hear about. Basically, he's got twenty people. He's doing a he's doing it DIY style. So he's got like a hammer and a chisels and scissors and and stuff like that. And he's managed to gather the uh, the main girl from the last movie, who. They have a little scene in it when they're driving back to the warehouse because she thinks she's just going for an audition. And she's saying stuff like, you know, uh, in the, when, whenever we did centipede stuff, we, we always had to promise to shower at least an hour before because, you know, we're next to people's art butts and we don't want to smell anything. And they had a nice little discourse, her basically taking the piss out of all of the, um, all the stuff the actors did behind the scenes and stuff. Not sure if any of it actually happened, of course, but yeah. And she says, um, I demanded a one hour massage after all of the centipede stuff every day. And so, yeah, it was, it was, it was a good scene. That was a nice scene. Uh, so, yeah, he's doing a botch job, DIY. He uses, like, duct tape and a staple gun. Uh, he used a hammer to knock out the teeth that are needed to be knocked out, because teeth needed to be knocked out, basically. And, uh, yeah, he uses a hammer. That was a bit bloody. Uh, then he, uh, he staples them together. I don't get with the staples either, because staples, uh, using a staple gun, yes, the staples are very long, and the staples are very powerful, and the gun is very good, but staples are just straight. They're not they're not hooked under the flesh at all, so pulling them out would be much simpler, if anything. 
and one guy actually does that later on. He just pulls his face away, which I commend him for that. Oh god, I'm spinning. Oh god, my mouse. Right. Whoa, Jonathan, you must be damn dizzy right now. All right. So yeah, that was a, that was a thing. Guy escaped. Uh, woman who he th woman, the pregnant woman who he thought was dead was put under a sheet. Came back, just opened her eyes suddenly. Uh, escaped, ran away, got in the car, gave birth to the child, put kicked the child aside to get to the pedals. Um, yeah, that was horrible. She started driving off. Uh, he then finds all the people in the centipede because he's angry at them, and he um, and he like he just kills them all with the shots to the head. He then finds the front half of the centipede, who the main actress from the first one is at the front of that one, and uh, he goes, he kills them, but he runs out of bullets halfway, so he just gets a knife and starts like slicing into their neck, like really brutally, blood gushing everywhere. There did seem like a bit too much blood, I'll be honest, but nitpicking. And then he gets to the front and he's like, I don't want to kill you, you're all like pretty and stuff. He doesn't say it. He just looks at her bug-eyed and starts stroking her hair. And then he, and then she, love her in this, she's got balls. She has got manly, manly balls. He, she just socks him in the nuts, you know, punches him real hard, just, just in the groin area. He falls on the ground, just like rolling around, right, rolling in the deep. And then she gets a funnel nearby, pulls down his underwear, which like tents like underwear, they're massive, pulls him down, shoves the funnel up his ass, and just uh, pours in a like a um, a centipede which he had as a pet which it's a deadly thing it's like from some other country that I don't know but it's it's deadly and it's been sh and it was shown hunting and killing animals uh, insects earlier and he starts going all like oh god oh my ass and then he uh, he's all like bleeding from from that area and he stands up and just stabs her in the neck she's dead obviously uh, not gonna clarify that one hmm I don't know what I'd do with these but yeah, that's that happens, and then uh, it just just wanders off to the child. Uh, no, he, it's actually that it shows the next day of him watching the human centipede in the um, in his security office again, and the child from before who he left in the car is just crying in the background. Uh, yeah, yeah. There is one scene that I really don't want to talk about before all the killing happens, but uh, I probably should because hopefully you guys won't want to watch it. Basically, he tries to feed the front girl, she refuses, so he forces the funnel down her throat and feeds her. He then proceeds to inject laxative into every single one of the me of the people in the centipede, and they all start to uh, explosively crap into the others behind them. Like, there's these horribly, there's like this horribly childish noises happening and then there's just like poop flying everywhere and it's horrible and that yeah that, so yeah horrible scene and that is basically it uh still a pretty iffy movie frankly it's a bit crummy most of the time but it's it's better than the first one which is not saying much to be honest um now my mind is off of that and i've gotten that horrible tale off of my chest what the fuck do I do with these levers? <laughs> Style. Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't think I have a guide or anything on them. No, I swear I don't. Very sorry that conversation took up most of the episode as well, by the way. This has basically been a nothing episode where nothing has happened. Nor will it, really. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm probably just going to call it now because I'm um, a little bit disgusted by the uh, by the centipede chat. Although, gotta say on the amnesia terms, loving the story. Jonathan, as always, is a great voice actor and uh, a master of tales. <laughs> I'm very sorry for the nothingness of this episode. I will figure out what to do with the levers next time. But for now, I will bid you a hearty and genuinely sorry adieu. <laughs> oh.